All right, we're live. Thanks, gents. Everyone can hear me okay? Yeah, cool. It's my first time I uh, bought one of those uh, stand-up desks. And so I've always sat down on it. But today I was like, oh, fuck, I think I might stand up. I feel like it's a bit more of a power position. So it's my first time using it. Um, and I'm so far so good. I'm standing on, I've got like a, a sheepskin mat, which feels nice under the feet. So, hey, hey, man, great to have you all. Feel your, uh, when I come into the call, it's like, oh, boom, oh, here we are. So grateful to have you all here. So I'll invite you to, let's drop in. So everyone, if you can, if you're driving or something like that, don't close your eyes. Uh, but everyone else, uh, just closing your eyes, if you can. And just a couple of deep, deep breaths in through the nose, hold at the top. When I say top, hold it like your crown, your pineal. And just let out with a sigh. And again, big deep breath in. And bringing your awareness to your heart. And just sinking deeper into this infinite space. And just becoming aware with any with any feeling, sensation. And not trying to change it, just becoming aware of what it is. Now bringing your awareness to your to your base, your root, the, the bottom of your spine. If it feels authentic to to hold, like you hold your genitals or that area down there, just bringing some some touch or to, to help you in that feeling. Now bringing your awareness to your crown, top of your head. Now just feeling like a, a current that's running from your crown through to your spinal base, through, in through your heart, through your central channel, basically through your spine. And if, if it feels right to you, you could your outward breath is the energy going down. Inwards, the energy coming up.
and then just feeling this current traveling upwards from your crown into infinity, into the heavens. And just feeling a, an infinite travel above you. And at the same time, the energy traveling down from your spinal base, deep into the ground, into earth. And just allowing yourself to feel and feel the extent of your aura, feel the extent of your body within that aura. And experience yourself as the conduit, the conduit of your life. your unique current. And whilst in this energy, take a 360 degree view, a time stamp of where you're at, where you're currently residing. Good. The bad. The pleasure. The pain. your wins, your losses. And feeling love, gratitude, for your life, all the lessons, all the learnings, everything that's led you to this point, excitement and gratitude for the future, where you're heading, your destiny, your unique path, your unique quirks, your individuality. how you hold yourself, your integrity, your honor, your worth, the love you hold, the love you give. And just placing one hand on your heart, the other hand on top of it. And just feeling this, this presence, this energy within you. And then just feeling, imagining that you're, you're gifting this to others in service. To humanity. And just take a couple of deep breaths. Hold at the top. And a sigh on the way out. One more.
and in your own time, opening your eyes, bring your awareness back to the to the screen, to the room, to the other brothers. Just take a moment just to just to, to connect in and just share from your presence now three words to describe your feeling good bad in between negative positive just whatever's whatever whatever uh first comes up and just drop it in the chat Just uh, mic the, yeah, just be aware of the being interrupted. The, the deeper meaning of that. TK, relaxed, scented, fresh, warm. And Will, beautiful. Roman, powerful, awake, strong. Hayden, release, calm. John, after that I felt calm, beautiful. Bruce, at peace, refreshed. Maddie, love, acceptance, comfort, nice. Mike, busy, aware, soreness. Beautiful. Will's relaxed. Dan, connected, aware, prepared. Nice. Luis, brother, peaceful, calm, love. Yeah, work, yeah. Alvaro, calm. Awesome. Thanks, man. So there's some uh, guys on here that I've uh, met before, others that I haven't. So uh, for the ones that I have, good to see you again. And the ones that I haven't, uh, welcome and uh, good to meet you and uh, grateful that you're here. So just one second. So just a little, yeah, a little bit about myself and uh, for those who don't know me, some of you may have uh, heard me share this story before. Some of you may haven't. And I invite you just to, just to receive. Um, even if you have heard it, uh, allow yourself to receive it because every time you, you hear a story, it really is a, it's a transmission. And uh, there's a lot of, you know, learnings and different aspects that, that come through it. So just allow yourself to, to receive it. Uh, you might get something different from it. And so uh, I know for me, like, I remember uh, when I was I was still in my job and I was into personal development and this isn't actually the story. This is like a prelude to the story uh, is there was this John D. Martini CD that I had. This is back in the CD days. And it was like a, it was just a, it was one of his talks. It was like an hour talk. It literally went for 60 minutes and I had this 60 minute commute to work every day. So I was in Sydney. I was driving from like Engadine to Port Botany and it was about 60 minutes and uh, with, with traffic. And so I'd play this there on the way there, on the way back. And I've, I don't know, I reckon at least a hundred times, this same thing, right? But just that repetition. And every time I'd hear it, I'd hear something different and go in a different way. So there's power and repetition. And so if you've, you've heard me share this story before, probably most of you haven't. Um, but anyway, just the power of repetition. So I, yeah, when I grow up, I was... Get, I was really like awkward in social situations. And I just, I really, I found it uncomfortable. I didn't feel comfortable within myself. And so one-on-one, -on -one I seemed to be okay. But if it was someone I didn't know, I was very, I was very uncomfortable, very awkward. And if there was a, a group of people, then I really, I wouldn't speak up. I would just, I would sit there pretty much in silence. I would, you, you would probably refer to me as very shy. I was, a, I was a shy person, very reserved. And 
I was also really, really bad with money. I just, as soon as money came in, I, it was gone. I just spend it. And so I was constantly like, you know, my, I'd get paid on a Thursday and by Saturday, Sunday, it was all gone. And I was borrowing money off people, off my mom and, and dad and things like that to get me through to the next paycheck. And so uh, I also discovered this thing called a credit card, which I thought were pretty fucking cool. It's like you get this free money from the bank. Um, didn't really realize the whole scope where you like had to pay it back then with interest. And so I got myself into this uh, pretty, pretty terrible financial situation. Um, I was in about $40,000 of credit card debt. Um, and it would just kept piling up. And I was like, I was in this job and I just, I just couldn't get ahead. I was like, I even asked for a pay rise. I got a, got a pay rise, but then I'll just, I'd spend that money still. It's just sort of in and out. I was like, I could never get ahead of this, uh, get ahead of this debt. And uh, so I was in this job. I thought I liked it. I realized I didn't like it. And so I wanted to get out and I had a friend of mine. Um, his name was Troy. Uh, he's actually one of my brother's mates. Uh, Mike, you know him, Troy Cleary. And uh, he was a personal trainer. And so uh, he was uh, he was making pretty good money, two, two or three grand a week. And to me at the time, I was probably making maybe 800 bucks. And I was like, two or three grand. And that's like, that's like, how do you even spend that much money? So I enrolled into a, a personal development course. And so, uh, no, sorry, it wasn't a personal development course. It was a personal training course. And so they taught about like anatomy and physiology and all that sort of stuff. And then the, the second, sorry, the, the third, the third, third of it, like one third of it was focused on business. So we sort of did the anatomy, how to train, how to exercise, all that sort of stuff. And then the last element of it was teaching a business sales marketing. And, uh, they had a big focus on personal development. And so the guy that was teaching it, his name was B huge, uh, Benny, Benny B huge. And, uh, he was just the guy that like, I really looked up to. He was just a guy that sort of, I guess he had what I wanted. He was confident. He was funny. Uh, he was professional. He really cared. He was integrity. He drove a Ferrari. Um, he could speak to groups and, you know, he had the successful business. And I was like, this dude has, has what I want. You know, like he has, he's, yeah, he's a, he was a great mentor. And so he uh, shared with me through this, personal development um module is like you can have anything you want in life it's just about you know finding the right information surrounding yourself in within the with the right people setting an intention of what you want to create and then working relentlessly and diligently consistently in the direction of it and you can become and have whatever you want and i was like maybe a little bit naive at the time probably but I was like, fuck, what do I have to lose? Why don't I just trust this guy? I just believed it. And I was like, all right, cool. What do I have to do? And so that I recommended books like Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. And so I just started devouring that information. And I started to realize that things started to shift actually pretty quickly. And so I went from being like really socially awkward, afraid of selling. I quit my, I quit my job. I went straight into personal training and I was like, if I don't sell here, like if I don't get some clients, I don't eat. And so it put a rocket up my ass and I, you know, started getting uncomfortable and I started getting in front of people. And so even when I was in personal training, actually I, I started as a personal trainer and I started getting some results and I probably had maybe like 10 or 12 clients. Then I went to this, it was this, it was this seven day workshop or retreat and it was called life design or seven days. And they looked at every different area of your life over seven days. It was like spirituality, it was money, it was business, it was relationships, it was health. And so I went to this seven day thing and something happened. So who's ever been to like a retreat and that changes their life, you know, changes the trajectory of their life. Things shift, they have profound shifts. Yep. Yep. So after that, I came back and I had a goal of like, cause I had these, I was probably like 10, 12, 15 clients a week. And it was maybe like 900 bucks. I was probably still at the same, I was capped at the same sort of income that I was before in my job, but I wanted to get to 60 clients. That was my goal. So I came back from that um, thing, that uh, retreat, it's called Life Design and set some big goals, set some targets, what I wanted to create over the next five years. And they impressed upon the power of like 90 days. 
And if, if anyone's in our community, this is actually the first 90 day sprint that I ever had. Um, and I came back and from uh, when I started within 90 days, I totally booked myself solid. I was doing 60 sessions a week. So I went from 15 maybe to 60 sessions a week. It's crushing it. I was making like three and a half, four grand a week, balling it, you know, killing it. And, but I uh, soon realized that I was like, fuck, I actually don't have any time. I was like, I'm working so fucking hard, right? But I don't actually have any time to really enjoy myself. And I'd come to like the weekends and I'd, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be broken. I'd just have to sleep. And my girlfriend at the time was like, come on, let's do something. Let's go out. I was like, nah, it's just like, I just want to, I just want to be on the couch. So I realized I didn't have much work life balance. So what I'd love to explore with you guys as a practice or as a, as an exercise is to look at those uh, four things that I mentioned. So surrounding yourself with the right information, uh, surrounding yourself with the right people, setting uh, a strong intention, and then working relentlessly, courageously, and intensely in the direction that you want to go. So I want to take take a moment here and just for you guys to do a bit of a, uh, a stock take on your life now and just ask yourself, you know, for probably probably uh reverse engineer it it'd be start it'd be the first thing would be like what's my intention like what do i want to create what do i want to create who do i want to become so let's start there pen to paper um if you're driving or something like that and you can't write just sort of do like a mental stock take and maybe when you get home write it down but what what is your intention what is the thing that you wish to create And it can include like, you know, who you want to become, or maybe it's a financial result, it's a business result, but what, what is it you want to create? Just for the uh, uh, for the the purpose of time, we won't go too deep on it. But maybe if you want to write it down, you can come back and add to it. Or Okay, so we'll just, uh, yeah, like I said, if you want to add anything to it later, or if you like, you add, you know, you don't want to, yeah, add some more juice to it. Um, so next question is like, do you have the right information? And that information, are you, are you immersing yourself within that information? Next question, are you surrounded with the right people? So look at the environment, 
this has a massive Im- impact on yourself and your results. Like if I look at my environment, you know, 90% of people are really supportive. You know, they're on the path. They're, you know, they're creating uh, a life by design. They're, they're on a mission. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're money motivated. They're, they're courageous. They're stepping into their potential, you know, all at different levels. Um, but mostly people are working in that, that direction. I don't have people anymore back in, you know, when I shared this story, I had a lot of people that, that weren't like that very negative people really doubted everything super pessimistic. And so I had to like go through this process of elimination and, um, it just sort of happened very organically as I just kept moving in my path, but a lot of people fell away. Right. So ask yourself now, are you surrounded with the right people? This keeps you accountable. And uh, yeah, maybe with that is like write down the people that are supportive of you. There might be some people in your life that are super supportive. It might just be one or maybe it's none. If it's none, then, you know, maybe, maybe you need to find some more people and maybe it's someone that you don't physically know, you know, like even, even books and podcasts and, you know, trainings like this, it's like, you know, you're, you are surrounding yourself with those people. You may not have like a, a proper friendship with them or relationship with them as such, but there is some sort of connection that can keep you accountable. All right, last one. Are you working relentlessly and courageously in the direction of your intention of where you want to go, of what you want? Or are you putting it off, distracting yourself, postponing it? focusing on low low priority stuff that's not relevant to this intention, this burning desire. Okay. So that was an exercise to to bring it to your awareness. 
Now, has anyone has anyone read or been uh, working with um, the book or the teachings, the Gene Keys? Yeah. Okay. Epic. Really profound. Highly recommend it. And so, our uh, two Gene Keys that are in my profile. Um, it's the 56th gene key and the 60th gene key. They're in like my life purpose uh, mission aspects. And um, the the two shadows of them is our distraction and limitation. So for me, I've had my whole life um, and, and especially at this time, sort of when I shared around being a personal trainer, like I had a big goal, I had a big dream and even, you know, post that, but I'd always, I did keep putting it off. I was always distracted by something else. So many distractions so many limitations or perceived limitations, so many things holding me back and I constantly put it off. You know, even, <laughs> even this morning, just not being aware of distractions. Like I came down here, I was like, cool, an hour, I've got an hour. I want to really get in the zone for this call, an hour. Cool, I'm just going to get really in the channel. And I was like, I needed to put a post in the, TF, the TFE men's group. And then all of a sudden I'm messaging people. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, Clint? I spent 15 minutes just messaging people. I'm like, just distracted. And so there's so many distractions, right? So I want you guys to take a moment now and become aware of from the intention that you shared above, like where are you being distracted? Just to give you some prompts, social media, your partner, your children, yourself, your habits, your parents, your pets, your sports, TV, drugs, alcohol. Where are you being distracted? Now, some of these things, all those things that I said, they're not, they're not always a distraction. Like my family cannot be a distraction and part of my purpose and spending time with them is amazing and incredible and needed. Other times they're a distraction. So becoming aware of when it's a distraction or how it's a distraction and just putting pen to paper. Same with drugs. I can use drugs for a special specific intention for healing or whatever or clarity or insights, but then all it's like, I can use it to escape distraction.
Okay. So same thing with that, maybe coming back to it might uh, demand a little bit more space and also become aware of it over the next day or two. Just, just become aware of where you're being distracted. It's like, I have that awareness now by exploring this more. And like, that's when I was like this morning and I was like, Oh, Holy shit. I'm distracted. All right. Fuck. Okay, cool. I'm back into it. You know, so you, you can catch yourself. It's okay. Distractions are everywhere. Uh, I mean, like I said, sometimes, sometimes scrolling on Facebook is intentional. It's even if you're, just endlessly aimlessly doing it it's like it's not a bad it's not a bad thing it's there for a purpose but sometimes aimlessly endlessly doing it when you should be doing this it's a distraction so just become aware of what's an distraction what's not what's intentional what's a purpose what's part what's part what's giving you some space what's some time off some time out so nothing's right or wrong only you know what's a distraction and what's not but just become aware of that the second one's limitations So we all have limitations. We're limited by time, by money, by gravity. By our body, by our sight, by our mind, by our thoughts. Thinking is another big distraction. So what's some limitations you have? Where are you limited? Maybe this is like you feel limited in your education or your knowledge or something you don't know or something maybe you're putting off. You're like, oh, listen, I want to execute this marketing campaign, but I don't know how to build a funnel. So you don't do it. That's okay. Like I, I wouldn't know how to code a funnel either, but I know how to resource someone who can code a funnel that, funnel that can then get that funnel created. So we all have limitations. I can't be good at everything. I can't do everything, right? But I can understand what my limitations are and then create structures in my life to support me and support from other people that can support me where I'm limited and call on other people's strengths that can support me then to get that task or that thing done. So where are you perceived limitations or what, what's holding you back? Who's having some realizations? Right. So same thing with that is just become aware. Notice yourself over the next couple of days. I feel uh, by being on this call and 
uh, as cracking open this awareness, you'll start to notice you're like, holy shit, fuck. There's so many things that I, that I want to do, but I'm not doing because of these, these limitations and I don't have the right support structures and I haven't give, given myself permission to, to do them because of this uh, belief that I can't do them. And maybe you can't do it, or maybe it's a new skill set. Maybe it's something you need to learn potentially, or maybe it's something you need to like outsource and find someone that you can collaborate with or a point to, to take on that role. Because the reality is if we all just did what we said we were going to do and acted on the, the visions that we have and the downloads that we have and the insights that we have, can we agree that <clears throat> life would be a lot different? I know it would be for me. You know, I, I, I limit myself a lot. I distract myself a lot. And I catch it quickly and I still keep moving the needle forward. And so it's not about being perfect and eliminating it all. But it's about becoming aware of it, catching yourself, and then taking action in the in the direction you want to go regardless. And gradually, step by step, piece by piece, layer by layer, it starts to shift. And things that were a limitation or were a distraction, they no longer are, mostly. Or it's like it goes from 90% down to 10%. Okay, so everyone just take a deep breath. Closing your eyes. Let it, letting that all go. Deep breath out. So after I became a personal trainer, I did that for a few years. I discovered I had a client of mine that was in network marketing and she just seemed happy. She seemed happy. She seemed free. She was bubbly. She was very free with the schedule. So it got me curious about this whole network marketing thing. So when I decided I didn't want to do PT anymore, I reached out to her and I actually got started with her in her business. I did that for about 18 months. I made about $1,800. So probably averaged out about $100 a month. So it wasn't uh, life-changing financially. However, I learned a lot. I discovered network marketing. I really fell in love with the whole concept and idea and I saw a big vision. I decided that that wasn't just wasn't aligned with the products anymore. Um, and all of a sudden I had this like download around water and I was like, fuck, water's so important. People need to be educated about water. I feel like there's a real uh, hole in the market here. Something that is a, is a forward trend. And so I wanted to get involved with that, which uh, led me to meet um, my mentor now, Balaj W. Cardos, who introduced me to Kangen water. And so I got started in that business, um, nearly nine years ago now will be nine years, nine years in January. And um, when I was about, I was about six months into the business, I'd made a few thousand dollars. I was, I was living free. I was fucking stoked. I was like, change the game. I'd made more money in that business than I had in my other business. I decided to move to Sweden. So I went to Sweden. I booked my tickets to Sweden, which spent, I spent all my money on the tickets and my mom I had no more money, but I was just going. I just trusted myself. I just, I knew I needed to be there. I was uh, taking a leap into the unknown and I just backed myself. My mom gave me 600 bucks. She's like, Clint, uh, here's a gift. She gave me 600 bucks. God bless her. She gave me 600 bucks. That's all the money I had. So anyway, I went over there and I survived from an magic payments. I had a guy on my team that was making sales and I just get like a bit of money here, a bit of money there. And it was enough to like pay rent, buy food, and uh, live a, a minimal life, but I was doing it. I was like living free. Uh, but I had this period where I completely ran out of money. No money. Money wasn't coming in for about 10 days. And so I uh, was like, fuck, what am I going to do? But I was like, just trust, Clint. Just trust. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You're always supported. You're always supported. And so I used to go up to this uh, hotel because I, no, I was living on a boat. There was no Wi-Fi on the boat. I used to go up to this hotel and... Um, I would use the Wi-Fi and I used to go up there about 10 in the day. And then this the next day after I'd run out of money, I woke up at like 3 a.m. Couldn't sleep. I was like, fuck, all right, I'm going to get to work. I'm gonna, I went for a run and then I went up to this hotel. So I went up there, 4 a.m., working away, Tupac blaring, this guy in the earphones, 
Tupac blaring just in the, the hotel lobby. Uh, about 6 a.m., uh, this lady came and sat down next to me. She had a plate of food. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Anyway, this other person came and sat down across. She had a plate of food. And I was like, what's going on here? And I realized there was a buffet. So I was like, just casually got out of my seat, walked over confidently to the buffet, grabbed the plate and filled up my food with uh, my plate with food. Went and sat back down, ate the plate of food. No one asked the question. I was like, okay, I've got food. I can live on this free buffet. Wasn't a free buffet, but I was stealing the buffet. Anyway, times were tough. I left Sweden um, and I came back home. I I really got focused, um, surrounded myself with the right people, consumed the right knowledge, uh, set a strong intention of what I wanted to create in the magic and got to work diligently, diligently, relentlessly and courageously in the direction that I wanted to go. Eight years later, my wife, she is connected with someone in our team that's in Sweden. And she's got the biggest team in Sweden. Nothing to do with me. It's in my organization, but I introduced someone who introduced someone who introduced someone else. And now there's this massive team in Sweden. I didn't make a sale when I was there, right? So we have this big team. My wife just goes, why don't we do an event in Sweden? I was like, Sweden? Yeah, hell yeah. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Uh, it turned out that my wife got a little bit, she normally like runs the events, puts them together. She got a little bit, uh, she had too much on a plate. So I said, listen, I'll take this event. I'll, I'll run it. I'll do it, right? Which is a big step for me. It was me stepping up, uh, being courageous. I was like, I'll put on this event. So anyway, I put everything into this event, uh, booked the venue, rallied the troops, and we had 150 people buy tickets to be at this event in Sweden. And it was literally to the date, eight years later from the last time that I was in Sweden. So I went over there with 600 bucks, Eight years later, I'm there I'm hosting this event, 150 people on my team, flying over business class, financially free. And I was just, as the, on the way, I was like, holy fuck, like a lot can change in eight years. And I was there, I went to the gym, it was the day before the event. And I checked into my, uh, I logged into my online banking and I checked and I'd received a couple of bonuses, a monthly bonus and a total bonus um, from uh, my company. Now, I'd say the figure, but for compliance reasons, I can't. Let's just say it was a lot of fucking money dropped into my bank account on that one day. And I just remember, I was just feeling, I was just like, holy shit, like my life has fucking completely transformed in just eight years. Only eight years. So I want you guys now to reflect on where you were eight years ago. Just take a moment. If you want to write anything down, but just take a moment. Where were you eight years ago? Think of like how you were financially, how you were spiritually, emotionally, in your confidence, in your self-assurance, in your self-love. Where were you eight years ago? Now think of where you are today and think of how far you've come, how you've grown, how you've grown, how you are financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, in your confidence, in your self-assurance, in your self-worth, in your self-love. Have you grown? I'm sure you all have. If you hadn't, I doubt you would be here today on this call or even in life. So I want to take you through a process. So closing your eyes. Just connecting back into that central channel, your heart. And 
now tuning into your past version of yourself eight years ago. And maybe you're going through a hard time. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe things were tough financially, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Now, from your current version of yourself, your more evolved version of yourself, I want you to shower yourself with love, your past self, your past version of yourself. Shower yourself with love, gratitude for all the lessons, all the learnings, the experiences, and realizing that everything that happened, it was a play to set you up for now. And if there's some words of encouragement, just whisper them in your ear. Letting them know that they've got this. You've got this. Everything's going to be okay. Everything works out. You are loved. We do make it. And just seeing your past version of yourself, their energy shift, their energy chains. And they and step by step, day by day, they make it through to today. Growing, empowering themselves, learning, stepping into the unknown. At whatever caliber you have, being. Now, I want you to tune into a future version of yourself eight years from today. Tuning back into your intention that you set at the beginning of this call, what you wanted to create. And being present with the version of you that created that, that is that. Now, from this version of yourself, tune back into the version of yourself that's standing or sitting here today. And give yourself love, appreciation, a loving hand on the shoulder saying, You've got this, bro. Everything turns out better than you can even imagine. And just taking a quantum journey through all the challenges, obstacles, trials, triumphs that you move through over the next eight years and just feeling the elevation in your prosperity, in your abundance, your purpose, your fulfillment, your love, your truth, your honesty, your integrity, your honor, and who you step into as a man, as a king of your kingdom. Now bringing your awareness back into your present. 
And what if, what if the whispers, the insights, the goosebumps, the intuitive nudges that you get is actually a future version of yourself whispering in your ear, giving you guidance, a shoulder on your hand, a hand on your shoulder, I should say, a hand on your back saying you've got this and guiding you every step of the way. And so as you, as you gave some love and reassurance to your past self, and so your future version of yourself is giving you that same love and guidance. I'm just taking a deep breath in. Exhale. I'm just sealing that hand, one hand on your heart, one hand over the other hand. And just feel that through every cell of your body, locking that in and freeing what no longer serves you. your limitations, your distractions. And slowly bringing your awareness back into the room, into the call. Giving yourself a smile. One word in the chat. How are you feeling now? Lit, empowered, powerful, enlightened, nice, supported. Beautiful. Faith, nice. How good is it knowing you can really support yourself in any moment? Greater, enlightened, at peace, excited. Greater, beautiful. So if you all don't mind, I'd like to take five minutes uh, to talk about the Rich Mystic Man Mastermind, 12-month mastermind. And if you're not interested or you, you need to go, then I understand. So last year, um, well, probably 10 years ago, I wanted to work with men because I saw such a huge shift that I'd had within myself. And so I was like, I really want to support other men to have the shifts that I have had and some of the things that I've learned over the years. And so I was always so close to putting together some sort of men's mastermind or workshop, but I always kept getting this stop and was like, nah, bro, just keep working on yourself. Just keep working on yourself. And so I kept doing that for years and years and years and years and years. And it got to the point of like, maybe I'm not meant to do this men's work. But when my uh, brother um, was nearing his death and I was there with him at the hospital, I just got this strong download. I was like, fuck, it's time. Because here I am with my brother being raised by the same, within the same family, same upbringing, of course, different, you know, versions of that upbringing. But here I am thriving, financially free, beautiful wife, children, happy relationship, healthy body, making lots of money, traveling the world, doing heaps of cool shit. And here my brother is in the hospital dying of cancer. And I just thought, what if? What if he was able to, to learn what I learned those many years ago? And what if I didn't? Maybe I'd be in a similar situation. 
So I put a fucking fire up, a fire up under my ass, and I put together the first the Rich Mystic Man twelve week mastermind. And there's a few legends on this call that were there at that event and retreat, and it was profound. And so from that, I realized there's the rich, there's the mystic, and the man. And so from that, I launched the Rich Man Mastermind, which is another twelve week experience. And for me, the great feedback was that from the uh, the 11 men that were in that first mastermind, seven of them joined again for the rich man. To me, that was good feedback that it was a great experience. And then we were having the rich man at the retreat. Um, part of it was that we had this thing called the rich pitch. So everyone that was there got up and pitched their business or their idea. And there was awesome people stepping up, pitching outside their fucking comfort zone. But it was a really powerful experience. And when I was there, I was like, I was sitting there, I was like waiting to go last. I'm like, what am I going to sell? What am I going to pitch? And then it came to me. What if we did it 12 months together? What if we did the Rich Mystic Man 12-month mastermind? And so we pitched that. Why well, I pitched that. And there's a bunch of people on this call that were from, from that and are now joining us in this 12-month mastermind. So essentially the essence of it is over the next 12 months. I know for me, I keep continually keep up leveling. Things keep shifting, tapping into more wealth, more freedom, more of myself, more things are coming online. And so I want to take some men, 20 men. I've already got nine. There's 11 spots left to journey with us over the, the next 12 months. And to encourage you to really step into the unknown. What's that next level of you that wants to be expressed? And so the first, there's four, there's three terms. There's the mystic, there's the rich and the man in that order. And so the mystic is the first retreat coming up. It's on the 21st, 22nd, 23rd of October in Byron Bay. And fuck some of the stuff that's been coming through. And I realized that over the last 15 years, I've been relentlessly, diligently working on myself. I've done so many different practices and routines and healing modalities, and I've healed so much within myself. And so it's all coming through to be delivered to you so you guys can use that to empower yourself so you can fast track your evolution. And for me, I've been on this deep spiritual quest at the same time, making a shit ton of money. And whilst I've been making a shit ton of money, I've also been deeply fulfilled within my spirituality. You don't have to sacrifice one for the other. You can absolutely have them both. And I know for you to step into your greatness, into your full potential, it's about clearing your channel, clearing your vessel, clearing your heart. And the more you do this, the more light you emit, the more radiance you have, the more opportunities, the more people, the more resources, the more money you attract to yourself. So if this is resonating, I invite you to send me, send me a direct message. I'll jump on a call with you. I'd love to have a conversation. I can explain what the investment is. It's not as much as what you'd think. A lot of people charge a lot more for these type of masterminds. I mean, I'll probably get there, uh, but this is the first 12 month experience. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen because I don't fucking know because <laughs> it's in the future, but all I know is it's going to be amazing. I can feel it. I can sense it. And it's really allowing me to step up. And so those who join us will also... Um, be invited to, to step up into a greater level, a greater potential of themselves. We'll also be exploring in depth the gene keys. I have my uh, gene keys Oracle lady I've been working with over the last six months. It's fucking been epic with her. Her name's Jill DeRose. And so we'll be exploring your unique gene key path. You, everyone has 12 specific gene keys. And we'll be exploring a different gene key in depth that's unique to your profile over the 12 months one a month and be supporting you through that. 
The rich is about marketing, money, business, sales, leadership. The mystic is tapping into your higher self, clearing, healing, discovering your unique purpose, your unique blueprint, and being authentic, and living an authentic life. And the man's sexuality. I have my mentor that's uh, worked with me to support us, to, to support myself um, in uncovering and clearing uh, my sexual energy centers. And so my plan is to invite her into the space to help support us. I know she's not a man, but it is some, there's power in being guided by a woman that's fully embodied fucking inner self to, to hold and witness a man into their potential. And so that'll be the man element. So it's going to be deep. It's going to be uncomfortable. But I invite you, if you're resonating and you want to explore it as a potential, then shoot me a DM. Just send me on on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Just send me a DM. Just, just say, hey, man, curious about the rich mystic man. And I'll tee up a time to have a conversation and uh, we can go from there. I have payment plans and things like that to make it easy, finance options and stuff like that. So it's all available. Um, yeah. If you feel the call, trust that, back that, send me a message and um, we can have a conversation and see how we can make it work for you. All right, man. Closing the eyes. Deep breath in. Just feel the presence of the brothers. And that's another element of the 12 months. You get to really connect in with the other 19 men that are part of the space. Be supported, be held, cheer each other on. And just feel the presence of the men in this group. Your place within that, that group. Your place within yourself. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> All right, man. Big love. Talk to you soon.